So, uh, I guess we can uh, start. Today I will talk about the Apache Minute project, what it is, uh, what we support, and uh, how the community looks like now. Uh, so, short agenda. Uh, I will introduce myself, then I will show a brief history of uh, Minute, and uh, then we will jump into details of uh, what we support, what is uh, possible with Minute, uh, there will be a separate section about uh, Apache Nimble, which is kind of a, a sub-project for, for Minute, uh, which is a, an open source uh, Bluetooth stack. And later on I will uh, describe how the community looks like, what problems we have in the community, and plans for future work. And at the end we can have uh, uh, questions and answers if we will have time. Okay, so about me, uh, I'm a software engineer. Uh, I'm mostly working on embedded software, uh, real-time OSs, and also Linux. Uh, mostly I'm focusing around the local connectivity area, so Bluetooth, Bluetooth Low Energy, some NFC. Uh, I do contribute to open source projects, uh, mainly Apache Minute, but also uh, Zephyr, Bluesy uh, on the Linux and some Linux kernel work. Um, I'm currently a PMC chair for Apache Minute since 21, and in 2015 I uh, co-founded the CodeCo, uh, company that we uh, support other companies with Bluetooth, open source, uh, embedded development, and so on. Okay, so um, history of uh, Apache Minute project. Uh, Apache Minute uh, started as a podlink in the Apache Incubator in 2015, uh, late 2015. Uh, it was initially uh, started by a company called Runtime, and uh, later on a few more companies jump in and start using that project. Uh, the project graduated and became a, a top-level project in 2017, uh, in June. Uh, shortly uh, after we did the first uh, 1.0 release of the project. Uh, in June 2018, we released uh, Apache Minute 1.4, which was a, uh, a major step towards the open source uh, Bluetooth uh, implementation when we uh, move the uh, Bluetooth stack into a sub-project of the project. It's the same project, we just have a separate repo, I will dive into details later on. And the latest release was done uh, in April this year, uh, 2.12. Okay, so what Apache Minute is? Uh, Apache Minute is an open source, real-time operating system for microcontrollers, mainly 32 bits. We have some 64-bit support, but it's mostly for uh, like a Linux and, and Mac OS uh, host emulation when we can run it. It's uh, very modular. Most of the components comes as a packages that can be included or excluded from the build, and they can also be configured. And application basically enables only those packages that are being used uh, and needed. Uh, we do release every six or 12 months, depends on uh, how it goes. <laughs> we don't have like a strict release schedule. Uh, so for example, the previous one was September 23 and uh, last one was April. I hope we will have a release uh, the same cadence, uh, hopefully more often, but we'll see. Uh, the system comes with um, own build system, so we don't use CMake and stuff like that. We have a tool called Newt that is used for package management and, and so on. Uh, you can develop on Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. This is all supported. And uh, we have the web page, minute.apache.org. Uh, so the features we have. So uh, the OS itself is like a modern real-time operating system. So, so you can get all those uh, nice features you would expect from this kind of project. So you have a multitasking, support for mutexes, semaphores, timers, uh, name it, uh, basically all the uh, modern concurrent uh, operating system. Uh, we also have something called MBUFs uh, that are like a buffer uh, management uh, uh, feature that allows to, have, to get a, a, a chain 
uh, of uh, memory buffers that can be combined together, uh, that can be passed between different APIs and so on, so you don't have to uh, do the fragmentation and the fragmentation on your own. Uh, it is uh, quite portable. We support multiple SOCs uh, and uh, from, from multiple vendors. Uh, name few. The, the, main, the main one are, of course, uh, Cortex-M from ARM. So we support uh, M0, M4, M33. Uh, but there is also uh, RISC-V support. Uh, we have uh, something we call native support, which is like a, a Linux. You can also run it on, on, my, on, on Mac OS, which is like a, a native uh, emulator. For, so you can run Minute as a Linux process. And we also support MIPS and, and ARC. Uh, the main uh, supported SOCs are ones from Nordic semiconductors, because they are most open in terms of documentation. Uh, and uh, really uh, open source friendly uh, socks. So we support family uh, 51, 52, 53, which is a first multi-core from Nordic, and also 91, which is uh, one for uh, LTE, you get the GSM or whatever with that sock. Uh, we also support multiple families from STM and also uh, Renesas, which is a former dialog uh, D1469 family. Uh, there is support for multi-core, although it's not uh, symmetric multi-processing yet, but you can get a sort of IPC between the cores if needed. There's a lot of boards supported out of the box, uh, currently uh, more than 80, and it's quite straightforward to add support for, for new BSP if needed. Uh, the OS itself is written in C, uh, but you can also uh, use C++ in the libraries or in the application. And there's also some initial Rust support for application. So a uh, cool, trendy uh, topic. Uh, what else? Uh, there's a built-in support for, for yeah? Small question. Uh, is the Rust B24 support? This is a core emulator that you can use for uh, I would have to check that. It, it should be listed on the on the um, Minute website. Uh, I, I'm not sure because some some has, I recall that some has uh, licensing issues with the SDKs. Uh, some were sorted out, so uh, it, I'm not sure yet. You can double check that on the after the, the presentation. Uh, so uh, we support a flash file system, but you can also use MMC uh, uh, as a storage if, if you want. Uh, there are a few file systems supported. Uh, FCB is uh, sort of a, a minute uh, uh, file system for uh, for flashes that has a, a list uh, list of blocks that uh, it, it, it tends to be a, a flash friendly in, in terms of leveling the flash. Uh, there is also a little FS support, which is more uh, a common file system. Uh, a FAT you can use if if you want. And NFFS, which is another file system from New, it's called the Neutron file system. It, it is also a, a flash friendly, but it's sort of deprecated because of uh, small issues in the design uh, that cannot be fixed uh, without breaking compatibility. Uh, so for development, we support a console that you can basically put on anything you, you want, uh, which means you can do it on the UART, you can do it on the RTT. So if your board doesn't have a UART, but you have a debugger connector, you can use Sega RTT uh, for a console. Not only output, but you can also input. So you can type things if you want. And uh, over USB and over IP, if your board supports, for example, Ethernet. Uh, we have a nice uh, support for, the, for a USB device. So Apache Manute can act as a USB device if your uh, uh, board supports USB. It's currently supported on some of Nordic chips and uh, Dialog and uh, I believe some STMs as well. Uh, it uses a USB, a tiny USB integration, uh, which is library that is providing the stack. And on top of that, we have built all the support for the USB. So you can, it can, you can go with serial, you can go with a, a mass storage device. So the minute device will be visible on the, uh, when you plug it to, to the Windows or Linux as a mass storage. And it can also support a standard BT USB uh, for uh, Bluetooth, so that uh, it will enumerate the Bluetooth device uh, on the Linux. Uh, we have support for secure bootloader and uh, image update. Uh, it is using MCU boot bootloader for signing, encryption, doing the swap during the update, and so on. Uh, MCU bootloader is an interesting project because it's actually a fork of 
initially it was a minute bootloader that was built in into minute it was forked and uh, gained the community so eventually we just switched over to using this uh, uh, fork from from uh, yeah it's it's really robust bootloader and, and quite secure uh, on top of that we have something called MCU manager which provides you with uh, uh, image management so you can uh, query for uh, versions you can do upload if you want uh, you can test the image you can get some statistics and uh, you can also add some custom commands if you want uh, and this is supported over serial or, or over Bluetooth uh, we also support the U standard USB DFU uh, so that if you can on Linux you can use DFU utils to do the update if you want and the nice one is uh, USB mass storage when you can drag and drop uh, image uh, to a mass storage device and uh, it will get updated you can also download if you enable that uh, the current image before doing upgrade pretty pretty neat feature uh, then we have uh, support for a user interface on the uh, various displays uh, also uh, electronic paper uh, this this one is using uh, LVGL for the for the uh, drawing the, the UI itself and the networking uh, we basically support uh, Bluetooth low energy which is the main target for networking we, we do uh, but there's also Ethernet support LoRa and some other libraries like co-op MQTT and so on and it's also quite easy to integrate external libraries if you need uh, for a, like a protocols mm, for crypto we have uh, support for of course embed TLS uh, we also do support a tiny crypt it's a bit of outdated project but it's really small comparing to uh, embed TLS so it might be useful sometimes uh, there's an initial support for uh, trust zone from arm on the uh, currently it's it is supported on the NRA 53 uh, but it allows you to do a very easy setup of the out of the box experience which means uh, you can for example make a bootloader secure and application that is running unsecure so that you are not able to modify even by accident uh, the bootloader uh, we do not have a support for a uh, arm trust firmware yet uh, but it's something on our to do and uh, we hope to get it uh, eventually uh, currently we have a sort of uh, internal apis that you can utilize in, in your uh, secure and unsecure applications and then we have some uh, development goodies so since uh, you know it's it's important to to develop in a nice way so uh, we, we support multiple build, build profiles you can build for a, a size you can build for debug you can build, build for performance you can uh, get all the resource usage when you build so you can check how the flash or RAM is being used how different options uh, affect uh, your system uh, there's statistic collections with the MCU manager you can basically grab a statistics on events that happens in the system uh, you can define your own statistics and there's a bunch of uh, built-in statistics already in the uh, in the OS uh, a lot of loaders is supported JLink, NRFJ, PROC, Open, OCD, you name it very easy to add more if needed and uh, there's also built-in support for system uh, view from Sega which is really good if you uh, need to track some performance bottlenecks in, in your system you can basically see how the interrupts and uh, tasks uh, interact with each other okay so a uh, new tool new tool is basically um, a tool that we use for building and uh, uh, it's 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 a foundation of of uh, of minute in terms of uh, setting up the project downloading the sources checking out the proper versions uh, handling configuration uh, building flashing debugging it's swift knife uh, in that sense and it's written in go <laughs> so not very common but uh, this allows uh, easily to uh, port it to windows linux mac and um, it has also built-in support for unit test it has a command uh, called unit test which basically executes uh, unit tests defined by each package so packages can can be unit tested if needed 
And uh, it is always released along with MyNewt. So when we do a MyNewt release, we always release a new version of Newt, which is supposed to be used for that version, uh, mainly because we add new features to a build system that we later on use uh, in those, um, in those uh, basically in MyNewt. Uh, so it's likely that if you have old Newt and you check out a uh, manual version of MyNewt that is newer, that it, you might get some cryptic build errors. Uh, basically, the, 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 the source structure is that everything is a package in MyNewt. And uh, packages define individual components of source code, so you can f think about them as, as a set of features that is being supported. Uh, those can be tied together, multiple packages, and then we call it a project. A project is, for example, MyNewt Core. Uh, a second project would be uh, Apache uh, Manute Nimble and, and few others that combine a, a, a similar functionality. And the uh, project can have uh, dependencies on each other, have, can have a strict version dependencies if, if you want. Uh, although currently we, we mostly rely on like, the latest version depends on the latest version of other packages. Yeah, cool. How do you assure that um, the package A is not also used in project? One or two, so that you so that you have to, um, reduce uh, duplication, right? So that you have. Well, can one project have the same package like the other project? Uh, yeah. So that's actually a good question. Uh, one thing is that the project has always a unique uh, path in the repository folders. So you always have like an uh, at and the name. So it's always unique. And if you have multiple, you you would probably. Uh, have to provide the exact uh, path of the project. So, so it would be a, a project one slash package, and then it would be project two slash package. So yeah. it's up to application or other package, because package can also depend on other package. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so it's always uh, up to the uh, user of the package to select the proper one. Uh, if something ambiguous happens, Nude would basically uh, complain about it that something is wrong with the configuration, unknown package or ambiguous package. Yeah. And uh, building happens uh, in a way that um, you, you have to get two packages. One is, uh, because packages can have uh, a type. And uh, to, to build an application, you need an application package, which basically defines your application. And then you need a BSP package, which defines on the board on which you will run the application. And if you combine those two, uh, they uh, pull up their dependencies and you get a, a target. Uh, and the target basically defines you, your build. Uh, you can customize the target with uh, build options if you want. You can customize it with uh, an options for a configuration of, of the packages inside, uh, inside the build. It's really straightforward. And uh, those are kept in YAML files. Uh, you can edit manually if you want. Uh, it's, those are very simple YAM files. <laughs> uh, or you can use a new, to, new to tool. It's like it has a commands like a set option, get option, and so on, so that you can uh, use the, the, the tool itself to, to actually configure it. And the system configuration. So each package can uh, provide own uh, sysconfig.yam which will basically define the options that it supports. You can compare it a bit to like a kconfig in, in Linux, where you will get the, the default value, the allowed range of values, description, maybe some dependencies, some restrictions, uh, and so on. And then uh, those values can be override by other packages. So if one package depends on the other one, it can tune it to its need. Uh, this can also be tuned directly from the target. There's like a, uh, a hierarchy of those. So target is always the most uh, uh, important one. You can overwrite everything you, you want in the target. And in the source code, uh, each of those configuration basically matches to this kind of a macro that you can easily use to uh, uh, exclude or include a specific code for the feature. A uh, new tool when doing a build, it basically detects the uh, configs, if you, for example, set the contradicting options or missing options for a mandatory settings and so on, it will complain with a nice error message and uh, it should be easy to fix. Okay, so that was the core. 
and now Apache Nimble uh, uh, originally uh, Bluetooth stack was part of uh, Apache Core, so the main system. Uh, we moved it to a separate uh, repository uh, when doing Apache release, uh, Apache Minute release 1.4, that was around 2018, uh, if I recall. And uh, the reason was that uh, we got a feedback that people are actually using that stack. They are porting it to other OSs, uh, doing some ugly hacks. But we got some feedback on how we could do it, and then uh, uh, we decided, okay, let's do it the way that it's easier for others to, to use that. Uh, I'm mentioning Nimble because it's a substantial uh, package in the core. I mean, it's, it's the, most, the, the biggest one in terms of code and features uh, comparing to other subsystems. Uh, so it simplifies the integration with other OSs. We have some ports I will mention. Uh, I will talk about them later on. Uh, currently, it's in version 1.4. It's... It can be released independently, but so far we mostly release it together with Minute. Uh, and uh, it is BTC qualifiable, which means that uh, you can qualify device based on this stack as a proper Bluetooth device and go on with the market. Uh, we have customers that are actually doing that, so it's, it's proved on the market. Uh, so the features for Minute, uh, we basically support most of the features from the Bluetooth Low Energy uh, 5.4. Uh, all the files, if your hardware supported, uh, advertising extensions, periodic, uh, ISO broadcaster, uh, which is a, a nice thing because it's sort of an LE audio uh, enablement, like a Bluetooth AuraCast. Um, uh, other than that, we support all the features in GAP, so you can get the privacy, you can get all the roles uh, concurrently, so you can be a master and slave on the link for the same time and so on. All the security features uh, and uh, basically everything you would need from, from the Bluetooth stack, like a modern one. Uh, there are a couple things missing, namely direction finding and uh, some of the connected ISO, but we will get there eventually. So the architecture of uh, Apache Nimble is uh, that it's split between the controller and the host. The controller is doing all the link layer and radio staff, and the host is doing the user profiles and protocols. Uh, it is fully configurable, and you can build it uh, in, in, a, in a way that it can be only host, only controller, or both combined. Uh, you have a freedom to do that. So, uh, and you can also like disable the features you don't need. So, if you want to say flash, you can disable I don't know a, a central role because you will be only peripheral. I don't know a mouse or something like that. Uh, so the Nimble controller, it's a complete link layer implementation. Uh, it uses a standard HCI interface to communicate with host. Even if it's built on the one, uh, on the single CPU, then it basically uses a, a RAM to, to transport those things. But the, the split is there. It's uh, really good in terms of understanding the stack and doing the qualification as well. Uh, um, the RF drivers currently are available for Nordic chips, uh, 50 to 51 and 53 family, and there is also support for a Renaissance uh, DA1469 family. Uh, they call it the CMAC. <clears throat> uh, it is quite straightforward to add support for other radios if you have documentation, and uh, they provide a sort of a, a, a support that you can implement the APIs for the FI that we have in the system. Uh, we do support external uh, front-end modules, so you can attach a, a power amplifier or LNA, and it will be enabled, disabled uh, by the uh, controller itself when needed. And it can be used without the host, right? So you can build only controller and use it with external host. Uh, particularly, you can use it also with Linux Bluzy. Uh, you can attach it over a USB or UART if you want. And there is also a quick, I mentioned, you can use it with Windows if you enable fake dual mode support, which basically means that we fake, that we support basic grade, the, the classic Bluetooth, uh, and you can use it, uh, an example, connect to a low energy keyboard and use it on the Windows. Windows will think that it's dual mode, but it, it's only a uh, uh, nice uh, thing for testing and playing around. Uh, okay, the HCI transport basically uh, transfer frames between host and controller. We support multiple uh, uh, transport. 
Uh, for multi-core um, MCUs, we have internal transports, like sort of IPC uh, between the cores. Uh, but you can also support, uh, you can use also UART. You can use uh, standard BTUSB, which will enumerate your uh, controller. And uh, there's also some uh, support for, uh, for a native target when you can actually uh, connect to uh, uh, your uh, Linux host. Uh, nimble Linux host to an external controller on the Linux uh, via the socket. <clears throat> and on top of that, then we have a host, uh, which basically implements all the protocols and uh, profiles from the Bluetooth. Uh, it is uh, controller independent. You can use it with other controllers uh, if needed. It's highly configurable. You can basically enable, disable most of the features. Uh, up to the point that the, even the single GUT procedures can be disabled uh, enabled. This is uh, important if you have really constrained uh, flash memory <coughs> device, like NRF51 is quite small, for example. Okay, and the uh, Nimble ports. Uh, so, as I mentioned, Nimble can be used with other operating systems. Uh, when we were releasing 1.0 for Nimble, we uh, in, introduce something called NPL, like a Nimble porting layer, which is basically an interface you have to implement in your OS if you want to port uh, Nimble to that. Uh, it really reduces number of OS-specific code inside the Nimble, and uh, there are only a few internal, internals copied to a Nimble from the mine, mainly, mainly this uh, MBOOF stuff. Uh, currently supported operating systems are Apache Minute, and Minute itself is also using the MPL, so it's, uh, uh, it's the same class of uh, port uh, comparing to other OSs. Uh, Apache Natix has a support, uh, which is other operating system uh, in the Apache TLP. Uh, Riot has support Linux uh, host only because you are not able to run controller on the Linux. Uh, Fiat OS and uh, Espressive has a uh, own fork of, mine, uh, of uh, Nimble, and uh, that uh, they have some extra features on top of that uh, for the ESP32 controllers. Okay, so um, community. Uh, most development currently happens, well, like most discussions happens on the GitHub and Slack, which sometimes we get complaints <laughs> from, uh, from the board. Um, <laughs> Um, but uh, it, it, it looks like people prefer uh, those over mailing lists now. Uh, mailing lists are mainly used for announcements, voting, and so on. Uh, we will be tuning uh, like the GitHub notifications so that they actually go to a proper mailing list, like uh, notifications, comments, and so on, so it's easier. Um, but I have to talk to InfraGuys on how I, sh I should actually do that. Uh, yeah, okay. Because it's uh, it's not that easy. I, I I cannot just go into settings on the GitHub <laughs> and and tune it like for other repos. But yeah. Uh, so currently we have like five to ten active regular contributors. Most come from CodeCo, uh, uh, but we have some uh, other companies that are also contributing on a regular basis. But those are more like a returning contribution. So we have a patch. After a couple of months, they sent some other patches, fixes, and so on. Uh, we also have some uh, one-shot contributors when people uh, fix the bugs that they actually have and fire forget about the peer, and then uh, uh, you, we have to handle that. Uh, we also get some contributions from Espressi folks, which is really nice. Uh, they try to uh, contribute back the enhancements that they have in their fork. Uh, yeah. Uh, ah, yeah. I, I believe that's the yeah, okay. two more slides. Yeah. Uh, so for community, we would like to get more contributors, and to do that, we improve the automated tests we have, uh, added more CI, so it's easier to handle PRs. Uh, we try to improve our feedback on the PRs because that's uh, the worst part now, that people send PR and they don't get any feedback. And we try to keep the documentation up to date. Uh, it, it tends uh, very easily to rust, uh, especially if you have uh, tutorials written with uh, specific links to versions and so on that are already outdated. 
uh, after the next release and so on and updating them, it's, it's tedious work. Uh, but we try to get uh, better. Okay, that's the last slide. So the, the plans for future, uh, it's uh, complete Bluetooth LE, uh, LE audio support, uh, though at least for those use cases that make sense for, uh, for a minute. I have more uh, sample applications, especially the small one that are showing one single features. Uh, proper integration with trust zone, uh, trusted firmware. Uh, more automated test cases for uh, things like uh, PVM, UART tests, and so on. Currently, only Bluetooth is uh, kind of automated. And to do the releases more often. Uh, we would really like to do a three or four releases per year, not once a year. Uh, maybe think about some long-term support releases when we have a proper base for those. And there have been some discussions about 2.0 release, which would probably introduce some API breakages. When we see, you know, you have a lot of historical APIs that you have to pull over and keep it compatible, that uh, we would probably like to change some of those APIs in the core and in the, in the Nimble to make it easier and more future-proof based on those few years of uh, experience we got uh, when developing. Okay, uh, yeah. I guess we are out of time. Yeah, feel free, so, so I'm, I'm going to be next, so, so I'm just going to run yeah. out for a second or two. Uh, so just feel free to use that for a few minutes. All right, so if there are questions, 